Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome live to uh, the race finish here at the 2021 Rolex Sydney Hobart Yacht Race. I'm Peter G, and with me is Peter Shipway, and uh, we're looking to see some more yachts cross the line after the uh, three Super Maxis finished in the uh, darkness this morning. We've got some action happening, and uh, Stefan Racing is about to cross, and out there on Storm Bay, it's champagne sailing. Well, we should say tazzy sparkling sailing this afternoon here in Hobart as this uh, sea breeze is really kicking in and pushing them to the finish. Good afternoon, Pete. Good afternoon, Peter. Good afternoon, everyone. Yes, we're seeing some exciting, exhilarating sailing coming across Storm Bay and up the river, and uh, we'll see those pictures shortly, but uh, the battle is on now. The line honours has been done and dusted. There's Stefan coming across in fourth place, skipper by Grant Warrington. You'll see her rather colourful hull in a moment. And uh, it's hard to miss old Stefan, the, the nice pink colour. There she is, the pink. Yeah, yeah. We, we missed the, the, the uh, spinnaker. I would have been interested to see what colour she was flying. But uh, Stefan Racing, Grant Warrington, uh, the boat owned by Stefan Ackery. As we go back onto Storm Bay here in Ichiban, uh, is racing up towards the Iron Pot. They've come across Storm Bay at a rate of knots, reaching across uh, from Tasman Island to the Iron Pot, and then it's 11 nautical miles to the finish here in Hobart. And uh, this is very important in terms of the overall result of the 2021 Rolex Sydney Hobart. Ichiban's got to put oh, a good 20 minutes on the, her nearest pursuer, and that's Whisper. Oh, no, uh, uh, Whisper's uh, in Celestial, front. Celestial, rather. Celestial, that's yes. right, Pete, yes. We've got Whis Whisper in between Stefan and Ichiban and then Celestial behind them. That's correct, and we're just watching now Celestial, beautiful sailing conditions as she approaches the Iron Pot, and uh, she's the defending champion. She won uh, the last race, of course, not held last year uh, because of COVID, 2019, and she's won the race twice, and uh, she's aiming to, to really put her name in the record books by getting a, a third victory, but it's all to play for. What are they doing on the, the bowman up there on the forward I, deck? I think they're just furling one of the uh, the reaching headsails that they've got up under the reaching spinnaker, or um, their code zero. Breeze perhaps um, lightening a little bit. We saw it really fresh around lunchtime, Pete, but looking out on the river now, it's probably down a little bit, but uh, still enough breeze to get them home. They'll fly a kite down the river. Well, they're, they're, they're just uh, um, unfurling a, another smaller reaching staysail or headsail under the, under the main reaching chute. Yeah, these, these boats, they don't have the conventional spinnaker. They set their spinnakers or reaching sails off a big bowsprit. We'll see those shots a bit later. If we go to the air, you'll see them. Uh, but the older boats have a spinnaker pole and they get the, a more conventional spinnaker called a symmetrical spinnaker. These are all asymmetrical spinnakers. As we pan back and perhaps we'll get a look at Celestial shortly. She's in the bay and um, still a good sailing breeze. It's going to be very tight between these two for handicap honours. As we can That's, see there, there's a Celestial. sail heading back towards yeah. Cape Rail. Yeah. You see Celestial. So they, Ichiban will want to finish 20 minutes ahead to, to take provisional, I guess, uh, handicap honours. Yes, uh, uh, 20 minutes is, is a, a, my rough guess. It's about, could be 18, could be 22 minutes. It just depends when they get finished, but it's going to be very tight. Celestial has a, a better handicap rating than Ichiban. So it means that Ichiban has got to beat her across the line. And the handicap's calculated by all sorts of uh, measurements that go into the computer system, the, the weight of the boat, the length of the boat, the, the width of the boat, the height of the mast, the, the size of the sails. It's all put into a computer and it comes out with a factor. And you multiply that factor by your finishing time. And the boat with the lowest corrected time will be the winner on handicap. And that's the for the Tattersall Cup. Do you think we're seeing the race right here? Who else Ooh. back up the east coast of Tasmania is a chance? Well, the breeze is freshening up on the east coast. And uh, when we had a look at the tracker earlier, there's a, there's a couple of smaller boats that are racing down the coast that will figure at the moment in handicap calculations. But they've got to get through a transition zone um, tonight and then further down towards Tasman. As we look, there's Smuggler. We can see she's not round Tasman yet. You can see Celestial's halfway between Cape Rowell and uh, the Iron Pot. But if we go further north, 
We can see Quest there. She's uh, just north of uh, Mariah Island. But she was my tip before the race yeah, started. I, so she'll, she's still in it. Yeah, Schutz Par was early, leading yes, earlier today. And she, she's right up there. But the boats that I think we've got to look at are White Bay Azuro. She's one of the smallest boats and has one of the great handicap ratings and also Love and War. Now, they're sort of east of Flinders Island, on gathering around the rum line, but you can see those wind arrows that are showing the direction of the wind. And it's quite a strong nor'wester, but however, if you look at bottom of the screen, you can see a southerly going to hit them, or southeaster, so that's going to slow their progress. But at the moment, if they are running... If you pull in here closely, you'll see the names come up on the respective yachts. Midnight Rambler is the, uh, the leading Tasmanian. Uh, there's only two Tasmanian boats left in the race, so there'll be a lot of local support for uh, Ed Saltis and Midnight and, Rambler. And there's White Bay Azuro there, a little 34-footer, a sister ship to the 1969 winner, Morning Cloud, who was skippered by Ted Heath. Ted Heath, Who yeah, went on the... to become Prime Minister of, <laughs> of England. Um, a, a really popular little boat, and Shane Kearns, the skipper, um, he's been there or thereabouts. He's been second in this race a few years ago. Um, so th there's one of the little boats that could do well. As we go back live now to, uh, there's um, Ichiban, Matt Allen, um, a, a stellar crew, a, a really well campaigned yacht. And, uh, and this is coming up on the iron pot. Yes, and I think a lot of people said at the beginning of this race or leading into this race, anyone that beats Ichiban will be in a very good shape to win this race. And so it's panned out that way. So Ichiban and Matt Allen looking to go into, uh, well, history books because only two boats have won this race three times. Maybe, that may be that, Celestial. Yeah, I think we're I think back that's with Celestial. Celestial. Yeah, yeah, we're back on Celestial. The breeze looks quite light here, Pete. Yeah, it's really lightened yeah, it's off lightened in the last off. five, yes. ten minutes. Yeah, which will play to the advantage of Ichiban because the distance will remain the same, but the breeze is down the time taken to sail that distance becomes greater of course that's Bruni Island we're seeing in the background the mouth of the River Derwent and, and that's there Ichiban. is Ichiban yeah I mean the lighter the dying breeze out in the bay um, as I said will um, favour Ichiban but she's still pressed there with with good wind you can just see she's furling up that Staysail, which would mean that the breeze is getting lighter. They're pushing out into Storm Bay a little bit, yep. heading over towards the Don Tricasto Channel to come down the middle of the river rather than just hooking straight around the iron pot. Now that look like they're, I think they might be jibing, jibing they now. Are jibing, okay, yep. it's exactly right. They jibe those asymmetrical spinnakers that the stays attached to the bowsprit, and they just the sheet change from side to side. So that means the breeze is getting lighter. As you said, Pete, they had to heat up for pressure. Then they've got a jibe and then heat up on the other jibe for, uh, for pressure. But what sort of boat speed do you think they've got at the moment? Well, early on when we first saw them, I would say they were doing 14 or 15 knots, but they're probably down to 12, 13 knots now. They're just unfurling the staysail there. You can see that un being unrolled. And uh, that sets under the spinnaker. If it gets too light, they will furl that sail up because it disturbs the wind going into the white spinnaker. But at the moment, they've got enough pressure to carry the, the reaching spinnaker and also the staysail. So if they can hold 13 knots, they're gonna get in here under an hour to the finish? Yes, because there's wind in the river. Um, we can hear it outside. It's uh, certainly brisk, but not a great deal of wind at, uh, at the iron pot or approaching the iron pot. So we've got four boats tied up at uh, Kings Pier. Well, in fact, three because uh, Law Connect looked like it, it's headed back to Sydney. But Blackjack at 1.37 this morning crossed for Lion Honours, followed uh, three and a half hours later by Law Connect. SHK Scallywag 20 minutes later, and then only about uh, 10 minutes ago, Stefan Racing uh, has come across the line. Now, let's go to the air. A drone vision now from uh, the Iron Pot. Is this coming into Celestial or Ichiban? As we get closer, we'll find out. 001 is uh, Ichiban, Matt Allen's 52-footer. See there, Pete, the breeze is down, isn't it? Not too many white caps. And uh, progress a little slower now. Only just... Uh, few waves and just keeping that spinnaker trimmed I think we've got uh, 
What's the difference between this is celestial, I think? Yeah. What's yep. the, or is that? No, that's celestial. That's yes. celestial. What's yep. the difference between uh, Ichiban and celestial in terms? Of we've got the TP52 up front. What's celestial? Oh, well, she, they're both TP52s, yeah. but they're, they're slightly, obviously, as I said earlier, different in rating. Probably a little couple of tweaks to make a, a lower rating, maybe just a slightly smaller sail area or a little bit of stability or maybe a little bit less in beam. It, it's only minuscule. It's probably like 15 seconds an hour or something like that. So it's almost boat for boat, but in a longer race, the benefit will go to the boat with a lower handicap. But uh, that's Celestial. They're just putting up the staysail now. You can see that. Or are they changing spinnakers or reaching sails? It looks as though they could be going to a lighter yes, as reaching the breeze sail. drops out a little bit the the sea breeze has been coming in early for the no, last month that, or so yeah, and, that's and dropping out so that is a staysail they're right. setting it's not going to the the top of the mast they'll unfurl that there they go so that means there's reasonable pressure to be able to set that it doesn't disturb the spinnaker and they'll just be working on their wind angles now i mean it'll be nervous times for both these boats nervous on itchy barn to see whether celestial can catch them and nervous on Celestial to see where they can catch Ichiban <laughs> because it is close. It's, it's going to keep everybody on their toes. It's down there's, a minute. There's it's no, up. there's no uh, slackening off here. This is, this is the race. All crews on deck, and it's uh, minutes will decide these two boats placing in hand, on handicap. And here's uh, a very light I, air now. It's um, is that Celestial from uh, from our boat angle, on the water? Yes. Yep. Other angle, yeah. On so a port jibe, uh, wind coming from the left-hand side of the boat. Just, you know, they're wallowing the, a little bit here. Yeah, they are. Yeah. I mean, they're probably down to ten, eight, nine knots, whereas previously, half an hour ago, they were rollicking along at 14, 15 knots. But they've got to get through the river, and the, at the moment, I think there's there's still plenty of oomph in the river, so it could get fresher as they get in, which will again favour the boat from behind. We've had one more uh, yacht radio in having retired, and that's Wonderland from the Newcastle Cruising Yacht Club. Rebecca Connor's boat has had to pull out with um, four-stay issues, which have uh, affected a number of uh, fancied candidates this year. So 37 boats have retired from the race. There are 48 still racing. Uh, I think there'll be 47 now, actually, with um, Stefan Racing having, having finished. Ten yachts still racing the two-handed division. The first time the uh, Rolex Sydney Hobart has included a race for the two-handers, and that's going to be very interesting. The Tasmanian yacht Sidewinder, uh, the leading two-hander on the water, though she's not uh, eligible to win uh, IRC handicap honours. But there will be a lot of pride in being the first two-hander to come in. Uh, and it's probably a day away for those uh, races. And if... Uh want to take a look out on the river there's still plenty of wind in the river probably more wind than we're seeing now um, with celestial as uh, she's approaching uh, the river entrance at the iron pot and there's the let's have the view from uh, the finish here and there's Stefan. They've got some work to do on board there. Grant Warrington will be overseeing the, the biosecurity protocols now. All members of the, the crews, when they get to Hobart, will have to take uh, rapid antigen tests to make sure there's no uh, COVID on board. And after 15, 20 minutes, if they get uh, all green lights, they can come ashore and meet their uh, families and uh, well wishes on board but until then it's hands off as we go back out onto Storm Bay and Celestial is honing in on the iron pot at the mouth of the River Derwent. And right in the background there with the white spinnaker in the distance is Ichiban. She's well to leeward of uh, Celestial so I mean Celestial's... There's the iron pot so Ichiban is uh, is not there yet. No she's not there yet and she's got a She's got well to leeward of Celestial, which is a, a very solid position to be. She's dead downwind of Celestial. So she's making sure she's covering Celestial from the front to make sure that Celestial doesn't get away from her on a, on a different course or different direction. But there's the Iron Pot Lighthouse just going out of vision at the moment. But it has been a slow race, Peter. I think it's, it's interesting to note that. It was the slowest race since 2004 for uh, Blackjack. 
her finishing time was over a, a day, uh, well over a day outside the course record set by Comanche. So Ichi Barn over there in the background, just hoping not to pick up a cray pot or two as they go in close to the iron pot. And that will leave them 11.2 nautical miles from the finish. Back up into the air and Celestial yep. with Wedge Island in the background there, or Betsy, one or the other, mm. and, uh, and the iron pot. So Celestial pushing out into Storm Bay. She will have to jibe to come into the river, but a bit of uh, CYC history on both these boats. Matt Allen, the skipper of Ichiban, a former Commodore of the Cruising Yacht Club Australia, as we watch Celestial jibe. Sam Haynes, the skipper there, he's the current treasurer of the Cruising Yacht Club Australia. So both men have put a lot into the sport as well as to their boats. No problems with that jibe. So they're going to head back in there towards Hope Beach where uh, a famous wreck in the early 1800s meant that uh, the authorities decided to put a lighthouse on the iron pot which has been there since 1832. It's the second oldest lighthouse in Australia. The oldest lighthouse has also been passed by this fleet. That's the Macquarie Light Station on South Head. So very fitting. It's a lighthouse to lighthouse race. Almost the full uh, 628 nautical miles between the lighthouses. This is a fair distance now as we look in the away with that white spinnaker uh, just approaching the iron pot on Itchy Barn. This will be tough now for Celestial. She's got to run away on starboard for a fair way and then she'll jive again on port to attack the iron pot. But still a reasonable breeze. You can see the, the weight coming off the stern. She's probably doing 10 or 11 knots. Easily driven. These boats are a fairly light hull and they're easily driven. They don't need much wind to get them going. Do they have canting keels as well? No, they don't. They're both fixed keel boats. So as opposed to the three Maxis that have finished and Stefan, they, uh, they've got canting keels that can move from side to side, but these boats have fixed keels. So that time you see on the Rolex clock up in the left-hand corner of your screen is the elapsed time. So they've been racing for three days, two hours, 38 minutes, 33 seconds. One of the slower Sydney Hobarts for the last uh, 20 odd nearly years. But uh, it's really intense now because seconds will be important here. A little bit of respite now as they jibe over towards Hope Beach and then they'll jibe again to get around the iron pot. And there you see just going underneath that headsail there is their immediate quarry in Ichiban. Looking to... Uh, join the two previous boats that have won this race three times. After the, uh, the bashing to windward on the first night, this will be very pleasant for the, uh, those on board, though they are racing full tilt. So uh, no slackening off. Who's calling the shots here? Well, it's, it's a team effort um, amongst the, the, the sail trimmers. The trimmer on the spinnaker would be looking at the spinnaker. He'd be calling the trim to the grinder, whether he wants the sail to be trimmed on or not. The helmsman would be feeling the pressure on the boat. The tactician would be looking at the wind. The crew would be giving input as to where the, any puffs are coming from or which is the best way to go. The navigator would be looking at the best course to take. So it's a real team effort. They weld together here. Trimmers working with the helmsman, the navigator working with the tactician. And they're just trying to make sure that they find every best breeze now it's all about the best wind to come into the river because we can see there's off the leech of the mainsail of celestial in the distance that's itchy barn and she's got good pressure she's probably not quite in the river yet and she'd probably got about the same amount of wind pressure as celestial but as they get further up the river towards uh, the john garrow and to the finish here in castro esplanade there's the iron pot. Uh, they will, the pressure will build, I think. These two crews will know each other <laughs> very well, being from the Cruising Yacht Club of Australia. Sam Haynes, the uh, skipper of Celestial, and Matt Allen would have uh, matched wits many, many times. So there's a bit of, uh, bit of bragging rights here, not just uh, battling for overall honours as we 
are above Celestial. And that's a shot we've probably never seen before on Storm Bay for the Rolex Sydney Hobart in 2021. Hype TV doing a brilliant job here. So thanks to our drone crews out there on the river. They'll be loving it as well. Well, Sam Haynes has placed in this race before. He was third in a previous Celestial. So he's been on the, on the podium, whereas Matt Allen has been on the winner's podium twice as a skipper and, and once as a crew member. But there's the crew, very focused, calling maybe wind pressure. Bit of darker water up ahead. Well, that's what they want. But can they see it? Can they get it? Just... Yeah, they've got nice pressure there. There's... See the boat healing a little bit now. That just helmsman going up for pressure. As he gets the pressure, he bears away a little bit. Sailing the best velocity made good, they call it. Downwind, which is the best, fastest speed in a straight line. And there's Celestial. Beautiful shots from the drone, aren't they? Yeah, Kanani Mount Wellington in the background there. That's... <laughs> the edifice, the massif that uh, overlooks our wonderful harbour here in Hobart. Will this little battle within a race be decided in those last 11 nautical miles? Also the navigator and tactician will be looking at the wind direction. If there's any change in the wind direction they, they'll either jibe or uh, continue on. If the, if the breeze tends to lift them they'll, uh, they'll want to jibe. Um, which means it's, it's favoured on the other jibe, but at the moment it looks reasonably steady in direction. The sou-easter. Just the bow goes up a little, looking for the pressure. As soon as they build the pressure and build the speed, they'll, they'll drop down, drop away, and just keep that speed well, maximum. Oh, there's a colourful sight. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you're watching from uh, the race village here at uh, Kings Pier, why don't you get behind Stefan Racing as the uh, fourth yacht across the line in the 2021 Rolex Sydney Hobart. They've uh, obviously fulfilled all their uh, biosecurity uh, requirements out there on the water and they're now heading into uh, their berth at uh, the King's Pier here. And what a sight. <laughs> You'd never miss this yacht. Colourful boat, colourful crew. No doubt about that. They've got those big centre boards up, which they, they drop down when they're, they're going to windward. She is a canting keeler as well. The first four have all been having swing keels, but she's uh, home safe and sound. Okay, she's just jibed. Celestial has just jibed onto, uh, onto port. Just trying to make advantage of every wind shift she can. Will she be able to hold this to the iron pot? Hard to say. I, I, I don't think so. She's probably above the ley line to the iron pot. Uh, but if she gets a decent pressure, she can get down. But just see it's light winds. That stasis just starting to yeah. just hang up there. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> We're not going to die out, are we, in the... Uh in the in the river that's is something which is always in the back of mind of every uh, sydney hobart skipper that the uh, the river can die out on you and uh, you can see your hopes go up in smoke it's reasonable pressure there at, uh, you can see the iron pot lighthouse in the distance and she's way above the ley line for that at the moment tense times really tense times here for both these boats the race could hinge on this as uh, there's uh, Ichiban, she's in, but jibing down the river. So she's probably got 10 miles to go to the finish, probably a, a good hour sailing to go. Both on, on port jibe. She's running out into midstream. Hazy sky around the, uh, the foothills of uh, Kunanyi Mount Wellington. But it's been an absolutely glorious day and the, the sea breeze really kicked in with a vengeance uh, a couple of hours ago. Let's hope it holds to get these yachts home. 
both TP52s, but uh, this yacht, Celestial, rates a little bit better, so uh, Ichiban will not want to slacken off. It wants to hold this advantage, if not increase it, if it's to uh, take handicap honours or at least put itself in uh, pole position with still a lot of racing to go with the smaller bo boats a good day away from the finish. Well, there's only four boats finished, of course, so, um, and Whisper's pretty close, I think. So, um, you know, there's still 40-plus boats out there that can fight this uh, overall victory out, and uh, a few have already, that their time has probably passed, but some of the smaller boats are still very much in the battle for um, the overall honours. Celestial was uh, designed by the German firm of Judel and Vrolik, who are very well known in, in yachting circles. Uh, Rolf uh, Vrolik has been involved with America's Cup designs as well. They've been designed some fabulous boats over the years for the, the Admiral's Cup and ocean racing. And Ichiban designed by uh, boat and yacht designs from Spain. So both overseas designs. So we've got four finishes so far in the 2021 Rolex Sydney Hobart. The next one to finish will be Whisper. And here she comes. That's the eastern shore of Hobart looking across to Transmere, uh, Tranmere and Druthy Point on the Hobart eastern shore. And they're looking to uh, lay the finish at Castre Esplanade. And they've got a good... Uh, there's more wind up here, I think, Peter, than down at the mouth of the river. It looks like it, uh, Pete. Yes, the... Another Judel Vrolic design, a 62-footer, skippered by David Griffith, another director of the Cruising Yacht Club. Another one that's put a, an enormous amount of effort into this boat. He's taken the keel off, made a new keel, redesigned the keel, repositioned the keel, and then put a whole new sail inventory onto this boat. That sounds like a whole new boat to me. It is a lot, <laughs> well, that's what his wife says. <laughs> yes. uh, but a, a crack crew, a Michael Coxon is the sailing master. Um, Rob Greenhull on board, a, a top English yachtsman who's run, won the round the world race. He's won two Sydney Hobart races. He was on actually on Itchy Barn for one of her victories. He was on Yakimo in uh, 2016, I think, when she won. Highly, highly accomplished crew. Tommy Braidwood is uh, the crew boss, top sailor out of Newcastle. How are they placed on handicap? As you um, see, the investigator, the Australian scientific research vessel in the uh, the foreground here, about to uh, head out in the new year on another uh, voyage off the uh, the continental shelf, no doubt. Yeah, well, Whisper will um, she'll be up in the I was probably say in single figures for the handicap at the moment. Um, as we watch Celestial fall, rolling up there, a staysail and going to jibe again, I would think. There she goes, jibes, it's an outside jibe, the spinnaker or the reaching sheet is outside the uh, spinnaker, very nice jibe, grinder's working hard there just to keep the spinnaker trimmed as she heads up, staysail unfurled quickly, you can see even now after three days, two hours, crack crew, got everything absolutely perfect there, lovely jibe, staysail furled and unfurled, and it's quietly, quietly at the moment, boy they'll be hoping for a bit more wind. Ah, there's the iron pot. They're just about to enter the river. They're laying in on starboard. They'll lay in there right almost to the iron pot, I would gather, and then jibe back out into the middle of the river on, on port jibe. See the wind instruments at the top of the mast that stick up there with a, a wind vane and a little anemometer that goes around that gives all the data that the navigator and the tactician use to calculate the wind and where they should be going and as we drift down the mainsail there you can just see that spinnaker getting a few wobbles through lighter air not too many looking from uh, the windward side not too many white caps there's uh, still good pressure uh, she's getting the bow down that's good get the pressure and get the bow down you can get a better vmg velocity made good which is the speed you want to go in a straight line Oh, and they're in the distance, is Ichiban. There's a foreshortening effect here. It looks like they're making ground on Ichiban, but... Uh, Maybe it's the camera, who knows? <laughs> exactly. 
That's what they'll be hoping on Celestial and they'll be telling each other, look, we're catching. And on Ichiban, they'll be saying they're catching us. So <laughs> there we go as we look up uh, the River Derwent. Celestial still honing in on the Iron Pot. Ichiban around and in the uh, river proper, as we call it here in Hobart. People come here for the first time and say, this is a river? As we look across to South Arm and Opossum Bay, Ichiban has won this race two times previously. But back with the, uh, the chaser, Celestial. Having a comfortable sail there on the weather rail, feet over, leaving others to do the work. But all eyes are for it, aren't they? Watching their quarry. Yes, they would know within a minute of what they've got to do, I think, so that they will have it all worked out calculation-wise of how close they've got to be to Itchy Barn. See the grinder there just trimming the in the yellow oil skins, just trimming the, the spinnaker for the uh, spinnaker trimmer. Walkie-talkie there. Who are they talking to, I wonder? Does someone for it or he, he may be listening to weather reports or something right. like that you, yeah. you can't obviously get no, confidential information but anything that's available to all boats you can you can get that information so maybe some weather reports from various stations around as we pan back and look can't at see any others in storm bay no, at the I can't moment see too many white caps either no it might be a very quiet night for those still at sea it could well be well, that's, that's the view from Celestial. Oh, you'd have to say they're making ground when you look at that. But uh, as I say, there's a foreshortening effect with the cameras. The crew's still on the weather rail, which is a good sign. That means there's enough pressure to, to keep the crew up on the weather side to stabilise the boat. Should the weather go light, they'll probably move to the other side and, and stack the crew weight forward. And I think was was we talking probably whispers getting pretty close to the finish or if not she's finished. We're coming up on uh, White Rock on the right hand side there on uh, on South Arm, the site of the the famous grounding uh, of Condor in 1983 when uh, the race for Lion Honours went right down the eastern shore. In fact, too close to the eastern shore and. Uh, Condor went aground and it was adjudged in the committee room that uh, Nirvana had not given them sufficient water and the uh, protest was upheld. It was a, one of the most uh, dramatic nights of sport that I've been involved in to be down at the uh, RYCT and Ted Turner, the owner skipper of uh, Condor coming out of the committee room in tears and I thought well their, their uh, protest has not been upheld no, it had been. He was in tears because they'd won the race in that manner, beating Nirvana on protest. So they won't want to get in too close to the land here. There's, there's more distance between these two yachts, though, as they push towards the finish. So do you go across to the western shore? Do you stay on the eastern shore? You don't want to go too far west and, and get into the notorious Taruna Hole? Yes, it's a tricky time now for the navigators and tacticians but Whisper has just finished David Griffith's boat she's fifth home and uh, it's a very good effort for those boys but they they parked up a couple of times last night and these TP-52s ran right up to them which uh, gave them no hope of uh, any victory on handicap and uh, that's Itchy Barn we're watching Decide to roll the dice a little, go out into the midstream, looking for the wind. Definitely the breeze in the river has died down since lunchtime, Pete. So, well, Let's take a little musical interlude as uh, Whisper comes across the finish line. We've got five finishes so far in the Rolex Sydney Hobart. 88 yachts started. We've had 37 retirements so far, five finishes.
Well, we've taken a pit stop here, Peter G, with Peter Shipway, and uh, and Rickon's taking a bit of a break as well. Our deep house DJ, he'll be back on stage. Uh, if you're watching this from uh, the village here on uh, Kings Pier, but we're going to stick right to the finish between uh, this match race, almost between Ichiban and Celestial. This is Celestial, which must nearly be into the river now about 11 nautical miles from the finish. Ichiban has got a break, but will it be a winning break? Will it ultimately be the break that decides the overall honours for the uh, 2021 Rolex Sydney Hobart? Let's take a look at the tracker, which can be a little bit uh, behind time. Ichiban looks to have a good break there. It's up off of Opossum Bay. Is that a 20 minute gap, Peter, do you think? <laughs> well, they're just <laughs> Celestials moved pretty quickly. There. They did, but, didn't yes, it? That's yes, that's we've a... just updated. So that's uh, according to that Ichiban doing 11.2 knots, Celestial 10.8. So pretty much even in terms of boat speed. We're going to try and catch up with Ichiban now. Isn't that picture perfect? This is beautiful cruising yes. <laughs> weather, isn't it? But uh, they'd be all, of course, the yachties want more breeze but they might have to make do with what they've got. It's a great shot, but uh, who's going to be the winner on handicap between these two is, is still undecided. But at the moment, we've got five boats that have finished. Of course, Blackjack winning line honours at 1.37 this morning, followed by Law Connect, Scallywag, Stefan Racing in fourth spots just finished. And um, just behind her was Whisper at this... Uh, battle here will decide who'll be sixth across but you'd probably have to say Ichiban barring any major catastrophes but can Celestial be close enough to to beat her on handicap which is on starboard jibe there a nice nice breeze nothing extreme but uh, she's still got a fair way to go you can see the speed of the boat there a few little white caps from behind which is always a good sign means there's plenty of wind she's got the staysail up and moving, moving quite nicely. Navigated by Will Oxley, one of Australia's great navigators. He's won the Fastnet race and uh, Middle Sea race. He's won the Hobart race. And uh, a highly qualified and credentialed navigator. Matt Allen, the skipper. Gordon Maguire, a top yachtsman who's won the race before. And a lot of his crew have won. And Niall Drennan's on board, the man they call Nitro. He's... Uh, come in at the last minutes one of the crew couldn't get over from New Zealand but interestingly here Peter you can see that red flag flying under the Rolex flag that is a protest flag which means that they could be launching a protest once they finish now did you notice that on Sydney Harbour no I didn't see anything on the harbour but who knows let's hope it won't be decided in the protest room but that clearly is a protest flag flying that red flag means that if you are going to protest another boat you've got to um, fly that flag there's gordon Maguire. i just i don't know what he's sanitizing his hands i think <laughs> or doing something <laughs> they don't want to fall foul of uh, the tasmanian health no, department no. now that's good pressure there for ichiban what a great shot look at that terrific right into your living room sort of so yeah. they're about a beam of uh, of kingston at the moment of blackman's bay so still got a way to go, nine nautical miles or so from the finish line. So they'll be here in under an hour. But with this dying breeze, what it mm. means then, it could be very, very um, disadvantages, disadvantaged to the smaller boats or the boats behind them that are trying to get round Tasman and across the bay tonight. Um, the sea breeze seems to be fading out, which is reasonably early, I think, for yeah. down here. Well, it's been coming in early the last month or so and then fading out early. So uh, normally in Hobart in summer, you want to get down to the beach and, uh, and have done your swimming by about two because the sea breeze is going to come in and drop the temperature somewhat. Uh, this year it's been coming in a little bit earlier, but uh, it's been calm by the early evening. So we look across towards Kingston ever-growing uh, metropolis to the south of Hobart. It's nearly its own city now. See the crew there on the weather rail. That's, as I said earlier, a good sign. That means they on that side for stability, try and keep the boat as flat as they can. 
Uh, if you see them move to the other side and up forward, that means they're losing pressure. But at the moment, all very comfortable, nice breeze. They're probably doing best part of nine to 10 knots, maybe 11 knots in the puffs, staysail set. So all good. Yeah, you'd think they're, they're gonna make it in about 45 minutes or so from here, if they can maintain this speed. And they're looking back to see uh, what's happening on board Celestial. And Celestial just uh, biding their time. There's not a lot they can do about it here at the moment as uh, Ichiban makes the running up the River Derwent. And that's Matt Allen on the back, uh, scratching his nose, standing with the white hat as the navigator, Will Oxley. Matt's probably looking at his phone to see how long they've uh, got they to They might be. be watching you, Peter. They might be listening to you, Peter, for some <laughs> little bit of outside assistance. <laughs> tell, them, tell them nothing, mate. No, no, tell no, them no. nothing. They wouldn't be listening to me, <laughs> that's for sure. But... Uh, It'll be nervous, nervous times, and can she join Freya and Love and War as the only three-time winners of this great race? As Will Oxley looks astern, so Matt Allen not at the helm at the moment. Do you want him to join Love and War? You were on its first two wins. Uh, do you want to? Is it three? Three's a crowd. Do you think? <laughs> <laughs> oh look if, if they win it you deserve it there's no doubt about he's that. put a lot of time and money and effort into this hasn't he and it finally got his two wins yep. will it be the third well you can see now the crew are moving to the leeward side and forward so that means the breeze is getting lighter the tactician and helmsman were just saying you know we're down pressure so just lean the boat over a little bit more so the crew have moved to the centre line or they want to move forward to get the, the stern out of the boat. You can see how wide that boat is from uh, looking from our drone shot. So the crew have moved inboard. They want to keep it just a nice heel on the boat to give a bit of feel in the helm and to get, keep the sails at maximum trim but it's just quietly, quietly now. It's, it's not a strong breeze but certainly a, a good sailing breeze to get them home if it lasts. That protest flag worries me. That's interesting, isn't it? They're still flying there. With, uh, what possibly could they be protesting against if it wasn't something on the harbour? Well, it could have been something, another boat during the race. Um, during the night? Yeah. Uh, someone didn't give way on yeah, the yeah. starboard But tack. you can absolve yourself by doing penalty turns yes. once you come into the into the river and now the crew getting back on the windward side so that's a good sign for them there's a bit more breeze coming see that s reaching sail set right off the b that uh, bowsprit very different to the old conventional symmetrical spinnakers where you had a big spinnaker pole and not as colorful i must no, say peter no but uh, certainly effective that's the modern way these days with these asymmetrical spinnakers. Easy to jibe. Looking across to uh, Howrah, the eastern shore of Hobart, also a growing area. Tranmere, as uh, I remember when I first came to Hobart, I thought, oh, there'll be never houses right down to the end of Druthy, but it <laughs> looks like it's going to happen one day. And the population of uh, Tasmania growing strongly at the moment. We just hope our infrastructure can <laughs> keep up. But every year there's an influx from uh, the north as they come down for the Rolex Sydney Hobart. Last year we missed this, Peter, so it's wonderful to have uh, everybody back in town. As we look down from about 50, 60 metres, our drone up above the mast of this uh, TP-52. Making your way at about eight, nine knots towards the finish at Hobart. Coming up probably on the Alum Cliffs now, a beam to the, uh, the port side. South arm to the starboard. And they'll round uh, Porter Hill and see the finish. Porter Hill so called because in the early days the uh, 
the boats bringing the liquor into Hobart. Some of them would uh, pull inside Porter Hill and unload their uh, their alcohol, the porter, the the, the beer from uh, the mother country, so the tax people didn't know about it and bring it ashore uh, on the Taruna foreshore somewhere. She's been a very successful boat since she's launched Itchy Barn. She's been very dominant in, in racing uh, right around the east coast of Australia and obviously her two Sydney Hobart wins were the peak of her performance but uh, every time she goes to sea in a race she's been close to the top one, two or three. And Matt Allen's put an enormous amount of effort and time and I guess money into this program. And uh, he went to Spain to have the, the boat designed and uh, they've really tweaked it up into a, a really special special machine. She's already won the, the Bird Island race this year. It's a lead up race in Sydney, second in Flinders Island and the Cabbage Tree race. So always on the podium, if not the top spot, as we're watching her now, just gently come up the river. By my count, there are 46 yachts still racing, including uh, Ichiban, which should be our next finisher, and then Celestial. So we have have had five finishers: Blackjack, Law Connect, SHK Scallywag, the 100-foot Maxis, who finished in the darkness this morning, this afternoon. Stefan Racing has come in and Whisper about half an hour behind her, and Ichiban looking to be the sixth yacht to finish and probably the first to finish that is a chance to win this race overall. Ichiban, uh, looking at her crew list, uh, Matt Allen we've been talking about. Uh, who's the important person here? The, uh, who's the tactician? We've got navigator Will Oxley. Um, I'm sure well, Matt Allen's got some input here about where we, that, that we should be going. Well, it's, it's, as I said earlier, it's a team effort. You know, the trimmers have got to work with the helmsman and the navigators, navigators got to work with the tactician and the sailing masters, Gordon Maguire, um, watch leader Noel Drennan, all highly experienced sailors. So they'd be uh, all combining to give input and uh, they would um, just be looking out of this boat now, hoping for wind. You can see Will Oxley with his name clearly on his wet weather gear. Fifteen crew on board. All up on the weather rail. Well, that's a good sign for them. That's good pressure there. Oliver Smith on board. He's the son of Ian Smith, who was a former America's Cup, Admiral's Cup sailor and a winning crew member on Wild Oats a few years ago, Wild Oats 11. What's the derivation of, of Ichiban? Is there a Japanese connection that Matt Allen's got? Well, Matt was a very successful um, yachtsman in Victoria and, and um, businessman, and he uh, left Australia for a number of years to go up to Japan and work with one of the, the big banks up there. And uh, he arrived back um, and called his boat, the first boat which he came back, not this boat, but other boats, Ichiban. I, I think it means good luck or... Best of luck in J or Japanese, is it a I think, number? or a number or something. A hundred or yeah, hundred. I think a yeah. hundred. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm not completely sure of the derivation, but it it's should be one, shouldn't it? Yeah. O one. Yeah. Well, all these boats. <laughs> How would he get O O one? You'd have to ask Matt. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> but he, uh, all his boats. He's had a few of them since he's returned from overseas, and they've been um, all called Ichiban. Celestial is not going to make up the ground if uh, they maintain this boat speed. But, you know, a minute seconds are going to perhaps make the difference here. They don't have to pass them. They just have to take enough ground out of them. Uh, handicap, they rate a little bit better. The uh, pursuer back down the river, probably uh, 
uh, half a mile, a mile or so. Celestial. There's a little bit of lump in the yeah. middle of the river here. Just had to heat up for a bit of pressure to get through those waves. See the, the crew still to windward now. That's that's uh, always a good sign, as I said earlier. It means enough pressure to get them out there. So now they've steadied the boat down a bit and uh, got out of that bumpy water. They can put the bow down a little. We hear applause coming from outside our uh, commentary uh, point here at King's Pier as uh, Whisper is uh, coming in. And the spectators welcoming in the second uh, yacht to finish in daylight. They're being taken past the, uh, the taste of summer. That is a real highlight for yachtsmen. Uh, and now they're over on King's Pier. It's being uh, moored here. Done a very good job. I, I know um, David Griffith well. He'll, uh, I think even though they'll uh, finish in fifth spot, he'll be a bit disappointed. I, he was hopeful of really giving it to these TP52s, but they really clobbered him last night when he sat in quiet conditions and they ran basically up to him with, with spinnakers. But anyway, that's, that's the luck of the game or the, the beauty or the drama of, of ocean racing. It can happen like that so quickly. You can stop and other fleets run up to you, smaller boats run up to you, or you can, the reverse can happen, you can get away. But it wasn't his race this year, but it's uh, certainly Itchy Barn in good shape. This is the fifth time this Itchy Barn has uh, raced to Hobart. Okay, well, the crew are starting to move again up forward and to leeward. Lighter air. Will Oxley there with a white hat. The Navigator Supreme. It's Gordon Maguire just scratching his ear. Probably, where do we go, sir? I guess you just don't do something for the sake of doing something. <laughs> no, a lot comes into play. You've got to look at your opposition, although they're a fair way back. You've got to make sure you cover them from in front, which is not always easy to do. You've got to look where the wind's coming from and where you're going to. It, it's a, a big equation that comes into play. <coughs> well, this is getting softer, this breeze, Pete. Mm, you can is. see it, can't you? These are the Alum Cliffs to the left and uh, Taruna to the uh, port side of the uh, Itchy Barn. Yeah, this would be a little worrying. When we are at uh, 20 past four, probably about high tide as well. I don't know if the tide makes a hell of a lot of difference, but um, the current usually always going out. This is a, a river. Uh, the River Derwent rises way up at Derwent Bridge. And there is some fresh water coming down. Though we have had a fairly dry December after a very wet November. Don't need to tell anybody in Hobart how wet it was in the early spring, but uh, glorious summer conditions now. See up there of the uh, Rolex clock telling us we've been racing for three days, three hours, 20 minutes, 12 seconds so far. So a slowish race. The uh, line on is winner Blackjack at 1.37 this morning. Taking line on is in two days, 12 hours, 37.17, the slowest since 2004. Is Celestial making up any ground on Chiban? Be a bit hard in these conditions, I think. That I, there's no, certainly no passing lanes. It's, you know, it's the, the distance would remain roughly the same, but of course the, the time remain, it gets different 
if the weather gets lighter, of course, it's going to take you longer to sail the same distance in lighter airs. So advantage here to, I would think, Itchy Barn in the, this dying breeze. She's slowly making her way up the river. That point they're heading for, Blinking Billy and the John Garrow light, and then they will head towards the finish line past Sandy Bay. And she'd still be making her yeah, it's a decent nine to ten knots, yeah. I guess. Um, probably a whisker more in the puffs, but that's, that's a reasonable or solid progress for sure. If it gets too much lighter, they'll probably furl that staysail up so it doesn't uh, impede the spinnaker or the, the reaching sail they've got up the front. drone not getting in too close but giving us uh, some wonderful shots from the top of the mast what height do we think what sort of mast height they got in these tp-52s well the boat is 52 feet in length so the mast would be probably 70 feet i guess off the off the deck and then the instrumentation is uh, another meter or so above the top of the mast so it doesn't get affected by the the flow of the sails um, it gets as high as it can and to calculate your, your wind direction and wind speed. And so are they watching that telemetry, that absolutely. instrumentation? Absolutely, all the time. Hawkeye? All the time. The trimmers, the, the tactician, the skipper, especially for the wind direction to see if they get any lifts or headers. And it's all about getting all that information together and cobbling it all together and working out which is the best speed for the boat which is the best course to take, whether to head up or head down. Or you can see the crew still at the forward of the mast there, just to, and not on the weather rail, just forward to get the stern out of the water. Great spinnaker trim there. It's hasn't collapsed at all. They're just, but that's a constant effort. There'd be one guy trimming that spinnaker talking to his grinder, man on the coffee grinder. Trim, trim, trim if he needs it to come on and he's easing it the whole time. It's a constant job to... They're alert, you can see yep. that, can't you? Yeah, absolutely. Here we go. There they go. The whole crew just moving forward in the boat. Sneaking a look back down the river to Celestial. Yeah, that's the owner, Matt Allen, at the stern, just having a <laughs> nervous cocktail. Can't see any signs of damage sustained on that first night when uh, so many yachts suffered in uh, that confused seaway. Not excess winds but uh, very rough waves and falling off something without a back has uh, damaged a number, number of yachts. In fact, uh, we're talking about canting keels earlier. Alive suffered with uh, a problem that with some part of the apparatus punching a hole through the hull. And that was uh, a yacht that of course carried a lot of Tasmanian hopes. They didn't see out the first night. Yeah, she was a former winner of the race and uh, she had to put out an emergency message to maybe assistance was needed. But anyway, they're all safe and sound as we look back down a very blue Derwent River. And just off to uh, the right of Itchy Barn is uh, one of Rob Pennicott's boats providing a camera platform for our uh, shots from on the water. Provides great assistance at this time of the year, every year to bring you these sort of pictures. It's hard to see Celestial there. It I, is. I can't see her anywhere, but it's... Uh, I think right in the middle of the, the oh yes, shot, really. Right above Itchibar, yeah, perhaps. Looking back towards uh, Bruni Island there, you can just make out Celestial. 
and I think that is a bridge too far for them. Pentecott Adventures boat just to the right as we uh, go to the map to see where they are. Chiban coming up uh, a beam of Taruna at the moment, Mount Nelson and then around Blinking Billy and to the finish at Castre Esplanade there at uh, Sullivan's Cove. You see that dotted line past Sandy Bay and their home. Well, that's showing Celestials doing 11 knots and uh, Ichiban 9 knots. So if you're in the Celestial camp, that's probably a, a good sign. But uh, it looks a long distance to me to, I think it's probably a bit more than 20 minutes, but who knows? out of the commentary position. Still a decent bit of breeze here at the finish line at King's Pier where they'll uh, soon be tying up in the marina. And uh, the 45 yachts that finish this year, should they all get in from now and no more retirements, will all be able to uh, berth in King's Pier. They won't have to go into the old Constitution dock, but, uh, which is a little bit of a shame. You know, it was wonderful to see the dock completely uh, gunnel to gunnel with uh, yachts and, uh, and the raft of boats uh, in this uh, Constitution dock, which has always been the, uh, the, the focus. But it's more King's Pier Marina, which has been built subsequently. And uh, in the foreground, you can see our Lion Honours Victor from early this morning, Black Jack. Uh, Stefan Racing, which was the fourth yacht to cross the line, and Whisper might be uh, there. Well, you can see Scallywag just behind uh, Stefan Racing. Whisper might be over on King's Pier itself. Yeah, I think that's where Whisper was docking. And uh, yes, Constitution Dock, it was a great part of the race to, to finish. The little bridge used to go up, and the boats came in there, and as you said, rafted gunnel to gunnel. It was a, a good party scene there, but there's, there's Whisper. Whisper. Yeah, you know, I think I might have sent uh, Grace and Joe, your loved ones, across. Uh, they said, are they going to be over here or in the marina? I said, in the <laughs> marina. So they've probably had to make their way around. You've got some people you know on board Whisper? Yes, yeah. Peter? A, lot of, a lot of friends on Whisper. Um, David Griffith, the owner, is a, a good friend. And Michael Coxon and Sam Hunt, we know them well. Tommy Braidwood and... Uh, not their year, but uh, I'm sure they'll be back for next year's Rolex Sydney Hobart race as Ichiban comes up the river to try and secure her third Tattersall Cup. So even if they do take the provisional lead when they cross here, it's going to be some time before we can actually uh, officially say they are the winner. Well, the little boat, um, White Bay Azuro, um, she's got, because of a small handicap rating, which is a huge advantage um, for a small boat, she's got a long time to finish. Um, she's probably um, got till New Year's Eve, till something like about nine in the morning, probably to displace either of these two boats. So the moment she's um, she's still got 220 miles to go so it's a long way to go and there's a lot of speed humps to hit before she gets to the finish but at the moment she's rollicking along at nearly nine knots right on course at 190 degrees so she's uh, southeast of Flinders Island in good wind pressure but as we saw earlier the, the breeze could be fading tonight and then they'll run into a headwind southerly which will uh, dash any hopes that she may have, but she's a rugged little competitor. That's White Bay Azuro, Shane Kearns' little boat as we're watching Ichiban jibing from starboard to port. And uh, that's, that's good wind pressure there. She's nice, neat jibe. across to the windward side which is a good sign for her 
It looks nice breeze there where she's going into. As you can see, the bow wave has really picked up. Probably the pressure's come up a bit as she's got further yeah, up the river. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, as they sort of a beam of, of Sandy Bay now. We've sort of gone from Taruna to Sandy Bay. That uh, forward hatch open. I don't think you have to worry about any water getting in there. So just on the raw figures that we've got at the moment, Itchy Barn uh, provisionally fifth on handicap. You mentioned White Bay uh, six Azuro. Love and War, which has won this race three times, twice with uh, my co-host Peter Shipway on board, Simon Kurtz, uh, the son of Peter Kurtz, uh, at the helm. A Midnight Rambler, Ed Soltis's Tasmanian entry, uh, currently third on handicap. Um, they've uh, got to get in sometime tomorrow to... Uh, to try and get ahead of uh, those at the moment that are beating on provisional handicap. Fruit Salad 3 has had a good race. And the Itchy Barn, which we're watching right here, which will be the provisional leader, I guess, when it crosses. Yes, she'll be the, the clubhouse leader once she crosses. So that will change the finishing times for the, the other boats. Uh, that, will, that will change quite dramatically once she finishes because at the moment the clubhouse leader on handicap is the, the line on his leader mm. winner. Uh, Blackjack, but uh, Itchy Barn to beat Blackjack on handicap, she has to finish by 10 o'clock tonight, so she's easily going to do that. So that will place her provisionally first, um, and then that'll depend on where Celestial will finish compared to that. But that will mean that the smaller boats will have to finish a lot quicker. Now, there's the John Garrow just on her port side, so she hasn't got long to go now, but she's got in really good pressure. A nice Judd's jibe to just yeah, it was. clip it was the good, garrow. Yep, to lay the garrow. They've got 2.1 nautical miles to the finish now. And uh, they look to be making a good seven, eight knots here. And they can see the finish. They can see the two uh, triangular orange boys off Castre Esplanade. As they come up to blinking Billy Point. A few people out on the beach there. Around blinking Billy. Yeah, she's picking up speed. In the race. Yeah, she's picking she up speed here, Pete. She's got good pressure coming out over the the land there. Past the old battery there, one of Hobart's four defences to repel the Russians, I think that one was <laughs> built for. <laughs> That'd be a long time ago. <laughs> well, let's hope it's not in the future. Yeah. Uh, that's Long Beach, Sandy Bay. There'll be some people swimming there on this uh, very benign, lovely afternoon in Hobart Town. What a beautiful sight. As Itchy Barn powers towards the finish now. She's made good time up the river, hasn't she? Mm -hmm. she she's uh, been very solid with the, the wind pressure and now it's probably a bit more than she had earlier, but she's just getting a bit lighter as she gets it closer to the shore. She's got a few more jibes to go, I would think, before she finishes. The kayakers are out. Yep, to welcome her home. Oh, just getting a little header there. The spinnaker just collapsing on the front edge. They're rolling the staysail up. Does that mean they're going to jibe or just down pressure? No, they're jibing. Oh. Here we are there at the go. Race Village. Hello We're everyone. broadcasting from there. G'day, everybody who's Give watching on the big screen. Give us a wave. There we go. Welcome. Hello, hello. How's the Devil's Corner going down? Thumbs up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Take a shot of that. Yep. Wonderful array of food and drink to be had here in the, in the village. As uh, back down the river, a bit under two miles, is uh, Itchy Barn just heading off Long Beach now. Back out into the middle of the river to try and lay the line to finish this year's Rolex Sydney Hobart. Heading b towards the eastern shore now. Making good speed through the uh, spectator wash. 
Good to see a couple of boats out there. Yes, are we seeing history being made here? Who knows? We'll know in about 24 hours, I'd say. But, uh, been a fantastic boat and a fantastic campaign under skipper Matt Allen. Even already she's uh, got a great place in the history of this race by winning it twice. She's going out into ready to jibe again they'll roll that staysail up there they go it's on a furling wheel that they roll up pull the line spinnaker around the front of the boat jibe they don't want to muck up this last one and they have it the main fills yeah. and away they go just probably a bit over a mile i guess to go to the finish yeah little bit more than that yeah off um, the beach at Sandy Bay Tasman Bridge Mount Direction on the other side of the the mainsail and the uh, Sullivan's Cove the Hobart port directly ahead well, she's maintained nice breeze hasn't she now it looks looks quite good for her she's probably got a couple more jibes to come to the finish she'll run in towards Sandy Bay I think jibe out and then one and in as they say yeah probably somewhere off the casino head back out into the river again but they will race right to the line to grab every possible second here They would know to the second how much they've got to beat Celestial by to beat them on handicap. And uh, they would have had that totally calculated. And from the moment they finish, they will know whether they've uh, succeeded in, in beating Celestial, who's put up a mighty performance to be so close to Ichiban. And the spectator craft just seem to appear from nowhere. Yeah, they do, don't they? <laughs> As long used as to be in the old days, you'd wait till you heard the choppers, but we don't need them anymore. We've got the... Uh... These boats with the yellow flags, are they uh, official uh, RYCT vessels that are going to... I would, I would think so. They've got an exception, them in. Yeah, exception they to get, get in closer. Get it closer, yeah. yeah. So wonderful drone shots as we look back to Nutgrove Beach and Sandy Bay, it's Mount Nelson. Nice little past streak. it now, and we should see the casino soon. Streaks of pressure coming down the course. So that's that's a good sign. Plenty of wind there now. Look, she's really moving beautifully. There's rest. Is that rest point? That yeah, is yeah, rest yeah. point. The good view from up at the revolving restaurant there. The extra spectacle for the the early dinner diners or the late lunch diners yes. <laughs> one or the other we were having a lovely time up at uh, the Cascade Visitor Centre in the sunshine Peter before we got called back with some action on the river uh, and good crowds around all observing uh, the protocols required in these COVID times, as these yachtsmen will have to do at the finish, they will be provided by one of those RYCT support vessels with uh, rapid antigen testing gear. And uh, 15 to 20 minutes or so, uh, they'll know if everyone is COVID free on board. We haven't had any reports of any problems so far from any of the other five boats that have finished as they put in another jibe. 
to starboard now as they go back out towards the centre of the river off the casino. Pretty slick. Very smooth. So they'll probably, I think probably one and in now, they'll go out and probably one more jibe to the finish. The finish is to the right of Empress Towers, that uh, apartment block you saw at Battery Point. Just down from there is the Castre Esplanade finish box and the uh, Tri Boys in the River that they'll be uh, shooting for. One more jibe, you'd think, should do it for them. Coming up to the finish, how much battery have you got? I used to fire a shotgun in the old days. It's still, the <laughs> still not allowed to do that, are you? This case, I, no, I don't allowed. think so. <laughs> yeah. Probably go to jail. <laughs> oh, it was blanks, I'm sure. Yes. You know. <laughs> Yes, making very solid progress. You can see the, the wakes of the support boats around her. They've got a, a fair wake, so she's doing it 10 knots at, at boat speed. She's laying almost down to the finish, but I think she'll just go out and probably one more jibe in will do get the job done for her. Yes, he's picking up pressure now. That's That's really good breeze. Almost become uh, another member of the crew here. 15 of them on board there. And this is as close as you could possibly get without being a crew member on Ichiban. So the breeze has stayed in to, uh, to bring them home. But they'll still be watching anxiously for Celestial and we should put the stopwatch on when uh, Ichiban crosses the line and see what the uh, time differential is between these two TP-52s from the uh, Cruising Yacht Club of Australia. So uh, Royal Ocean Racing Club being acknowledged on the, the stern of Ichiban. She was nominated as Boat of the Year. That's a worldwide nomination a couple of years ago because of her success in 2019. 2018 but uh, she didn't win the ultimate prize but to be nominated is a pretty prestigious thing to happen for uh, for any boat as they're just setting up now for I pre presume perhaps the final jibe and in Will Oxley in the white hat they're just looking at the ley lines to come into the finish so this should they Take the provisional lead and hold on to it would be a consecutive win for uh, Matt Allen on Ichiban and his third with this boat. And that would go make it uh, in rare company with uh, Freya and Love and War as a three-time winner of the race. But uh, let's not count the chickens for them. They certainly won't be thinking it's a done deal. There yes. we see one of yep. the Finnish boys. Yep. The line she's is not approaching. Up. She's not far off a jibe. There she goes. Stasel rolled. Helm down. Spinnaker across or reaching sail across. Mainsail across and now on final approach. So it's port jibe to the finish, only a few hundred metres away for Ichiban. The TP-52 from Sydney, Matt Allen. Is he heading into the history books with victory here? Twenty metres away. And Ichiban crosses the line to finish the uh, 2021 Rolex Sydney Hobart. Can they take handicap victory? They will be provisional leader as they finish at uh, about 14 minutes to five on uh, this afternoon of the 29th of uh, December. Just f 
final bit of work to do. And they look back down the river to see where Celestial is. As down comes the spinnaker. And a little bit of paperwork now, Peter, for uh, Matt Allen to oversee. Hope you've enjoyed watching Itchy Barnes' journey up the uh, River Derwent with us this afternoon. Lovely sailing conditions and now some pats on the back, some shaking of hands and smiles all round on board. Itchy Barnes, do you want to run through that crew list for us, Pete, of uh, these yachtsmen? Well, under skipper Matt Allen, there's uh, Davin Conagrave, Noel Drennan, Craig Garnett, Ben Lamb, Gordon Maguire, Sean O'Rourke, Will Oxley, uh, Dick Parker, James Patterson, Jeremy Ray, Tim Ryan, Timothy Sellers, Oliver Smith and Matua Tiha. And uh, it's a very solid crew. A lot of those boys have been with Matt for a long time and shared with him the, the previous successes. There's a few newcomers there. But uh, full marks to them. First TP52 home. And... Uh, they will now be the, the clubhouse leader. But as we keep saying, there's a, still a lot of boats still at sea. This is, she's only the sixth boat to finish. So there's still 40 plus boats to, uh, to get home. So we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, thanks for being on board with us uh, on Etchy Barn and Celestial. Um, can they get in inside 15, uh, 20 minutes? You know, that might be the difference in this race. But uh, they've got a bit of work to do. But the breeze still seems to be holding in for them. So a little bit of an anxious time on board for those on Itchy Barn as they now do go through their uh, COVID protocols and testing. One final thing to do, but they'll be keeping an eye down the river for Celestial, the other TP52 from the CYCA that's heading towards the finish. Peter Shipway, thank you very much. This is been a fun afternoon hasn't it thanks pete yeah it's been great and some wonderful shots there from uh, the water and from the drone to see itchy barn come across and uh, celestial also in the in the river and uh, so still a lot more to play out that's for sure in this race so uh, those of you that are watching us on the stream wherever you may be we'll say goodbye from uh, hobart with this uh, live coverage from the 2021 rolex sydney hobart we hope you can join us again at uh, some future date there's still a lot of racing to be done and uh, we've virtually had none of the fleet come in so uh, here we are uh, three days three hours 48 minutes 40 seconds into the race there's a lot more to uh, take place those of you that are watching from out there at uh, at the uh, in the village we'll uh, take you back to uh, Rickon who's got some deep house for us I think some nice relaxing music after a bit of uh, exciting racing this afternoon wherever you might be have been joining us this afternoon it's been great to have your company Peter G on behalf of Peter Shipway and all our Hype TV crew the CYCA uh, live stream uh, the YouTube channel it's been great to have you with us this afternoon we'll uh, talk to you again shortly from Hobart goodbye for right uh, for the moment